Good morning. Welcome to our second day at the Landskrona Photo Festival. We will start off with a conversation between the members of Black Book Publications. Uh, they will each present uh, the artists they worked with and made signs with. Thank you. Am I on air? Yeah, I am. I can hear myself speaking. Hi, welcome. My name is Simon Langeni Bay. I'm uh, one of the founders of uh, this collective that's called Black Book Publications. And uh, we are here today because we have an exhibition in the far end of this uh, Exercise Hallen. It's called Dialogue. And uh, I'm sitting here together with some of the participants. Maybe you just want to present yourself and tell me your name. Marie, uh, oi. <laughs> I'm definitely on air. Uh, Marie Lagerqvist. Um, and I'm a new member of Black Book Publications. Yeah, and, um, my name is Lotte Thanut, and I've been a member since 2014. So. Yeah, the same goes for me. I'm Emanuel Sirkvist. I'm also a member from, from 2014. So Black Book Publications started as a, we thought it started as a publishing house. It's a really a way of uh, collaborating when you wanted to do smaller publications with photography, it was, I met uh, the photographer Kalle Sanner, we went to the, to the same school at the time, Hode Kovalan, as it's called now, and we didn't know anything about how to even uh, acquire an ISBN number or how to get it distributed, how to print, how to find a good graphic designer, so we started to collaborate around that, and uh, since then it grew, I think, I don't know even how many members we are at the moment. But Eleven, I think. We are, yeah, we are yeah, quite a lot of people and we have published so far quite a lot of books also. And today we are kind of a, we're not a platform, but we are a group who collaborates a lot with both exhibitions and smaller publications like we are going to show today and uh, regular book books or what you would call it, like proper books also. So there was a little bit about Black Book. Uh, we are here today because of the exhibition Dialogue. And uh, I don't know if you, maybe Mona, would like to talk a little bit more about that and what it's, why it's called Dialogue. Uh, why it's called bi Dialogue. Um, dialogue was a way for us to sort of step out of the comfort zone, maybe. If because making a book always takes a lot of time. And it's also mostly, often it also takes a lot of money to produce it. So doing an, a scene was a uh, way to maybe have a faster process and it's not so anxious either to do, th do this small kind of uh, publication. Uh, for me it was also, I did a project with Fredrik Åkum, who's a painter, uh, and I did only kn knew him from the work he did, not in person really. So it was from a way for me to step out of this comfort zone uh, and also invite a new person to have a, s a process with, uh, basically. Um, maybe that didn't answer the question about dialogue. Yeah, but yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. So the concept with this exhibition is, as I understand it correctly, uh, it's fan scenes or scenes, and it's collaborations between one member of the group and yeah. some external part. And, but what do you work with normally and how did that change when you started to collaborate with, a, in this case, a painter? Uh, usually I work more with the landscape and what, like the history and the layers of the uh, collective and personal memory that the landscape consists of. Um, and I don't know how, if it changed with, with Fredrik Åkum, but it was a nice way to, to have one else read and see your work and also respond. Uh, our project, okay, maybe I could talk a bit about that. Yeah, yeah, it's called copy. Stille Post, which means it's German and means, it means um, shine is whispered. So that was the context or the concept of our work. We just send and respond images to each other. So I send an image through email to Fredrik and he sent one back. He got inspired or he thought that this one would fit the project and send one back and I respond to that. 
and so on. We worked in two months, uh, and in the end, we just put all together in this sim. Was he helping you or working against you? And your <laughs> he, he was helping me. I was uh, a bit, uh, I thought, maybe naively, like I thought that he, he would paint, obviously. But, but he sent a lot of pictures instead. Um, so I was a bit disappointed on that. Because they were even better than mine sometimes. So. <laughs> uh, but, and also, I mean, he's also a really good graphic designer, so that also helped a bit, because he was doing the final touch on the scene. Uh, so that was quite good for me. That's great. And Can we kind of jump in with questions? Yeah, please do. So, did, did, did the images change from the beginning to the end? Like, is there a, a slight change in what kind of images you ended up with? Like in Chinese Whisper, you start with one word and you end up with something completely different. Or did you kind of moved out and then you moved back into the same kind of area of interest? Uh, no, maybe. I mean, maybe it's changed from. I think it's. It's really. With, it started with one picture and ended up with, an, with another. So it was more changing through the whole process, not so much back and forth. So it's, yeah, we, we put out maybe four images in the end, but that was only like very formal because we only had 32 pages to work with oh. in the scene. So that was fine. Yeah. But I, I also know you, Marie, you had a, an unexpected experience of, of your collaboration. Would you like to tell us more about that? <laughs> I'm not, sh I, sh I should not repeat what I said before because <laughs> I said something else. Um, I, I made, this book with uh, Sven Drovnitsa, it's embarrassing. I know him for some quite time, but I can't pronounce his surname. Um, Sven is um, a friend of mine and a neighbor. He's, a, he's an artist. He, used to, he went to photography uh, department in, in Gothenburg, uh, but he's moved on to painting, more or less, so he paints more. Um, and my idea was that we should uh, because we're both working quite a lot during the summer. Um, my idea was that we would use old f photographic images and then put them together and do something, uh, you know, a little bit like, like Emmanuel, because it's a good, it's a good way to, to have a dialogue when you can't physically meet uh, every, every day or so often. Um, but then Sven said, no, I don't want to do that. And I said, okay, we do something else then. So I gave him some images, some prints out, and he wanted to paint on them. Um, so he painted on my images. And it ended up being uh, images that were hard to, because we, we, one of the, the framework for this dialogue was also that you invite someone, but also that the format should be A5, which, or low, less <laughs> than A5. <laughs> Less than A5 or large, you know, not, not larger than A5 in, in a, in a fold-up format. Uh, and the images that he made of my images, they just didn't really fit in a f small format. So we made it as small as possible. Um, so one is a fold-out, what do you call it? A fish poster, kind of. Yeah. And the other one is a, like a harmonica images to fit everything in. And it became a bit of a, the, the dialogue ended more that I gave him something that he responded to and then he gave me back this work that he put all the images together and made a long painting of that. And I couldn't get the colors right, so I was just like, okay, we make it black and white instead. And we put some colors in afterwards. So I have, there is, there's a two side of, of the little booklet. So one is color and one is black and white. And, and you can, yeah, interpret that in ways if you like. So that was more the dialogue that we responded on, on what was physically there. And then we made something from that too, yeah. It's also very kind of handmade, isn't it? Or it's quite yeah. exclusive in that it's, way? Yeah. It's, 
it's stupid, it's handmade. Also, I think the idea with scene is that you make a lot, and it's simple and it's easy. And then, of course, you ended up like, yeah, we'll have this uh, harmonica because the work needs to have this long format, and it's far too expensive to make a, a, a bigger but, edition. But scenes, isn't it also important that it's cheap to do it, and it's easy to distribute, and yeah. it's made with the things you, I mean, you have paper you can steal from your job, or yeah. like it's supposed to be a, a low budget production also, which is the... So half of it is low budget and the other half is not. It's a lot budget. of labor men. It was <laughs> too, too far too much labor made, yeah. yeah. Um, I never learned with that, yeah. You, Lotta, you have a little bit of a different collaboration? Yes. An homage also? Do you I broke many rules with this. <laughs> Doing it smaller than everyone else. And I work also with an artist called Susanna Majuri, who is uh, dead. And I wanted to, because I always felt very much a connection. We went to the same school in Helsinki, Finland. And uh, I felt connected to her with how she worked. This is her, her photograph. Um, and we both had a love for the sea and water and, and for the imaginary uh, like landscapes. So I made a little sign that's uh, like a homage to her, I can say. Um, and I also wrote a text to her. So my collaboration was my s mostly me having a super pressure on myself <laughs> to make something good out of her photo photography. Uh, because, it, well, she couldn't say no. So I, yeah, it was, it, it was different and, and hard, but it was also very nice. And I'm very happy I made it. Yeah. What's the similarities and the differences between you and her when it comes to your work? You uh, I can see that there's a connection. Of yeah, course. there is a connection. Um, well, we, as I said, we both had a, like a very much uh, love to the sea and like how to be free and also mental illness and everything that surrounds like death and life. And, and um, she, I, when I knew her not very well, but a little, and when we when we talked to each other about our images. Uh, it was very much about poesy, like poetry and uh, like um, our love for text and for the sea and like it was so many parameters that fit with us together. So when we got this idea to make this dialogue, I felt I wanted directly to do something with her. Uh, and then I was lucky that her ex-husband um, said yes. <laughs> That's, um, so. Was that the answer? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but I'm, I'm still curious, is it possible because when you don't, when you collaborate with someone who cannot speak, mm -hmm. are you letting her work affect you more than it would otherwise? Or like, when you don't have that struggle that Emmanuel and Marie and myself would have in the, is it, yeah. uh, do you have to be more? I had very many like inner dialogues with myself and her. Like, yeah. what would Susanna want? I, I think this, she would like this. And I mean, I, she was actually one of the most uh, nicest person when I studied in Alto, in Helsinki. And she was one of the first per persons there who said like, oh, I really love your work, you, you should continue with this. And like, really pushed me to work harder. Uh, and so I kind of, also, that's why I also feel like I, I feel that she, she understood me and I understood her. So. I have a, an open question for the table. Have you learned something during the process that you would bring with you f for the next publication on your own? Did, you, did the collaboration teach you something or do you just want to work alone from now on? Good question. Uh, I think that, I mean, I mean, we did this because of the process being so lonely as an artist, working with books, it takes, I mean, you maybe work with a graphic designer and you have like someone writing a text, so in some way you are a group of people doing your book, but it's also very, very lonely in like your process. And I mean, I was lonely here as well. So it, I don't know, I don't think I fit working in groups like that. I mean, I fit in this collective, this black book, but when working with my art, I feel like I need to be alone. So I, maybe that's what I learned. Like. That you, best, you, you like it best when you're by a <laughs> do you decide yeah. yourself. Yeah, no, but I mean, Susanna, she's, uh, 
a fantastic photographer. If you don't know her, like she made a really nice book. I think that Neva books had it for sale. Uh, it's super beautiful. Um, and uh, so, of course, I mean, the, it was an honor to like get her image in. I was quite shocked that he, her ex-husband, who also is a friend of mine, said like, yeah, but do what you want. Here are some images. Like, okay. Pressure, pressure. Yeah. It's never easy to work in with the states, usually. But that's good. And you and Monel, do you have anything that you want to uh, well share with the group? <laughs> I, th I think for me it was uh, new for me to work with uh, this scene format. So that was quite nice. I think there was another photographer who mentioned it as the uh, in-between books or something like that. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, that would be a, a nice way to like continue working with the format. So I, I think we're going to go for that later on. You mean the format as a sign? Or yeah, we're yeah. not doing this expensive, uh, hard-covered yeah. bound books all the time, at least. <laughs> How expensive is it in production to make a fan scene like this? Uh, we talk money. It's Should we like talk money? money. <laughs> yeah, why not? Like, if people want to know, like, how much do I have to? I think this uh, one was around 400 euro, maybe. So for 300 copies, so it was very cheap. That's very cheap. Yeah. yeah it's cheap. And maybe if you ask Marie, it's going to be more expensive so if, if it's handmade. For that one, well, if you if you count the hours, yes, but not the material. No, no. then it's 40 euros. But um, I, th I think also that scene has its. Um, I would object to the in between books because I think scene has its own format, its own kind of advantage and, and disadvantage. It's it's fast and it's uh, you can you can photocopy it in the, you know at work or whatever. It has that quality and that give, brings brings it something else. It gives gives the whole thing something else. It's like a mixed tape instead of a you know. A an album, and that is something else. It's just not on the way. It's it's. Uh, so there's uh, also a lot of photographic work that is actually just four images, or ten images, or five images. So what what to do with it if you want to distribute it and be able to share it? It's very hard to. Yeah. If you have to wait for ten years until you have the big catalog and you can print it, so I think it's got a lot of advantages, as you say. But if I kind of redraw that in between, I think it was I, I, for for as being a new uh, member of this collective, it was a, it's a very nice way of uh, of doing small things in between these big uh, publications or, or book launches that you uh, we talked about opening up for others or not and this and that and this was a way to to include others without too much hassle. And a nice way of starting up something is a nice way to to invite someone that you don't know but like their work and for and for you for make an homage and for mm -hmm. me to to work with someone that I know but we never worked uh, artistically together and so it's an, it's it's almost like a social game in this as well I would say it's a social it has a social um, advantage uh, that you can. Um, yeah, it's fun, and you do this together, yeah. and it's not... You would so recommend it? I would recommend it. Okay. <laughs> but m maybe we could ask Simon as well, because yeah. you did a collaboration with your partner. How was that? Oh yeah, there was, yeah, there was... I did a collaboration with my, with my wife, who's also... Uh, who's doing a lot of other things, but... Yes, this is, this is our book, and... Uh, I mean, usually I, I love to work alone. I, I think that being a, an artist is the should be a lonely process and sh you shouldn't involve other people. You should let your, your own brain kind of go crazy. So I don't like to talk too much ab with other people and I do not like to collaborate, but, but uh, I got an offer I couldn't refuse uh, from my wife and um, she was already doing a, a fun scene actually. She was doing a sign about her uh, upbringing in apartheid South Africa where she grew up. So she had a lot of things that she wanted to share from the... It's kind of the burden of being brought up in such a damaged society and what it means in, ex in extension, I could say. And uh, so I've been doing my, my photographs and uh, we have been collecting all those different... You 
can say, uh, like the, the folders you get at funerals that you, uh, well, I mean, you make them, but there's also a lot of funerals because there's a lot of violence and there's a lot of uh, people getting sick from living in the biggest mine dump probably in, <laughs> in the world, like Johannesburg is just a big mine dump, and uh, the poverty and HIV and everything. So it's, uh, it's notes from her iPhone and, uh, and uh, funeral, funeral uh, catalogs and uh, yeah, my, my still lives and pictures from, from the life. So it's, it's, a, it's a, we really try to not, to, to use the fancy format also to not reach perfection and to use what I like about books and always have liked about books is that you can kind of try to catch a moment of time. So if you don't have money to make a good production, you make a sloppier production or you make a cheaper production and then you can, 10 years afterwards, you can still see that, okay, this is the kind of printing technique that I could afford, this is the kind of way I could do it. So it's better that it gets done than that I save, you know, save it for later because I'm not going to want to do it 10 years later or 5 years later. So it's supposed to be a glimpse of, of two minds at a certain time of history, you know, and that's it. So, so but I, I like the outcome. It's interesting to, to work with someone that you don't, I mean, when it comes to, to art, I don't know if we agree too much with each other about things, me, <laughs> me and her, but because she's in another business, she's in the design art, graphic art business more. So yeah, that's, that's what that looks like. And, uh, should we, should we tell them where they can find those? Where do they go if they want to see those fanzines? Yeah, we also have a table over there. Yeah. So <laughs> you're, you're welcome to come by. You can buy it, you mean? You can you buy it. You can buy them. Wow. Yeah. And that's also, like, they are very cheap. They're very cheap also? Yeah. Can you get, like, a, a good price if you buy all of them at the same time? I think <laughs> so, yeah. Wow, okay. Of course. Of course. But there are not but too many all, copies yeah. made, right? So it's... Yeah. I would hurry. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. But you can get them signed. Is that possible? Of course. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can sign wow. for the ones who are not here also. We can, we can do everything. Sounds great. Questions? No, no questions. No, um, we no, no questions? Uh, thank you for your insightful conversation and for showing your beautiful work. Um, thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.